So are you happy this morning? Yes. You got the joy of the Lord in your life? Yes. All right, good. Well, I'm going to preach on something this morning I, I don't know if I've ever preached before. It's the Ten Commandments. There's a lot of controversy about the Ten Commandments now as it was in years past. For example, in 2003, Judge Roy Moore in the uh, state of, great state of Alabama refused to, to uh, move the Ten Commandments out of his courthouse. Even though the order had come down from the Supreme Court, he said, I have a right to acknowledge my God and where the laws came from. They removed him from his judge, judgeship, they disbarred him, and they took the Ten Commandments out of his courthouse. That was in 2000. You're right, man. This past week, if you heard about Giles County, Virginia, a group of uh, people went before the school board and said, the Ten Commandments that's hanging on the walls of the school uh, violates the, the uh, separation of church and state. And so the, the school board voted to take them out of the schoolhouse. The next meeting of the school board, there were over 200, 200 parents there demanding that they put the Ten Commandments back in the school. The board took another vote. They voted to put them back in. And so now they're hanging in school in Giles County. And to this day, no one has come to them and complained about the Ten Commandments being there. So when we talk about the Ten Commandments, we know that God gave those to the Hebrew people. Because, I'll put it very simply, they were out of control. And God needed to put some rules and regulations in place. Now, the Ten Commandments does not guarantee you salvation. If you're able to fall onto the T, it doesn't guarantee you salvation. And a lot of times people think, well, the Ten Commandments do not apply to me today. Because we are a New Testament church. Those are old laws that were given by God. But I will tell you that the Ten Commandments are just as relevant today as they were back then. Because the Ten Commandments show the very nature and the characteristic of God. And he was trying to show the people that if they, if they kept the Ten Commandments, they would live a better life. And God would bless them. Now when Jesus began his ministry on earth, the people thought that he had come to... Destroy the Ten Commandments, but open your Bibles with me, if you would, to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. We'll see what Jesus says about the Ten Commandments. I don't want you to just believe it because I said it. I want to be able to read it out of the Bible to you. Matthew chapter 19. Beginning with verse 16. Matthew 19. Beginning with verse 16. Are you there? There's Bibles in the front of the pew book if you need them. And then where we have our, I always say that wrong, where we have our hymnal. There's Bibles in there. Okay. Beginning with verse 16. Now a man came to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? So we see here where the man came to Jesus. He was wondering, what good laws, what good things must I do to get eternal life? Now we know that you cannot do good to get eternal life, am I right? It is understanding and knowing that Jesus Christ died for your sins on that old rugged cross. You accept him as Lord and Savior. That gets you to heaven. And so Jesus replied, there is only one who is good. If you want to enter the life, obey the commandments. Now does this sound like Jesus is trying to destroy the Ten Commandments? He tells the man what? Obey the Ten Commandments. Because he knew what the man wanted. The man wanted to say, I fulfilled all these rules. Now I must get eternal life. Look what he says. So there, uh, okay, let me, uh, there's 18, thank you. Which ones the man inquired? Jesus replied, do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honor your father and your mother and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said, what do I still lack? And Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. And when the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. 
So even as a rich man, who was obviously a very moral person, who did all the right things, he still lacked one thing, and that was the pride that was in his heart. That was the idol that was in his heart, that he worshipped above God. He was not willing to give up that prized possession in his life in order to follow Christ. When Christ came to the disciples, and they were along the shoreline, they were fishing. Jesus told them to drop your nets and follow me. Leave your livelihood, <coughs> commit yourself to me totally, and come follow me. And they did. That's the commitment that God is looking for in our life. Now go back to Exodus. Let's look at Exodus chapter 20 this morning. This is where the Ten Commandments are found. We're going to break these down. And so I'll tell you that the Ten Commandments are relevant today in a Christian's life. Exodus chapter 20. We have some great guidelines for our lives. If you think about it, if we use the New Testament of Christ's teaching, and we use the Old Testament, that combination gives us a good way to live our daily lives. Now, I'll give you a little bit of background as we look into Exodus. The Israelites, the Jewish people, had been released from Egypt for about three months. They were out wandering in the desert. They were ready for God to come and speak to them. Now look at verse in chapter 19, Exodus 19, verse 5. Exodus 19, verse 5. This is God talking to Moses to tell the people. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my what? The treasure of possession. So God is saying the covenant and the Ten Commandments is a covenant between himself and the people. And he said, if you will obey those, then I will favor you above other nations. Now think about this today as Christians. If you obey the Ten Commandments and the teachings of Christ, are you favored in God's eyes? You think? You live in a holy life, right? Absolutely. And God will bless you for that. So now the people have heard that if you, if you obey these commandments, then we'll be blessed. And I love the way God comes to them. Today when God speaks to you, he speaks to you in your prayers. He'll speak to you with that still, small voice. He'll speak to you so that you know that it's God. But back in the Old Testament, when God came to town to speak to the people, it was a big deal. So God is telling through Moses, telling the people to wash yourselves, to be consecrated, get ready, because I'm coming on the mountain. Of Mount Sinai, and I'm going to give you my covenant. I'm going to give you the laws that you must abide by. And he says, do not touch the mountain. Do not let your animals touch the mountain. Do not let any priest touch the mountain. Because I am God, I am a holy God. If you touch it, you will surely die. How far would you have stood away from the mountain? When you see this big thundercloud coming and you know there's God in the and the glory of God with the clouds rest on top of the mountain. Would you want to go and just touch it and see what happens? No. No. Some of you would. Maybe if I could just touch it just a little bit and see what it feels like. No, God said, stay away from it. Stay away from it. I am speaking to Moses. Now look at verse, in chapter 19, verses 16. We'll get to Exodus 20 in just a minute. Exodus 19, verse 16. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. Everyone in the camp trembled because they knew God was there. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke 
because the Lord descended on it on in its fire. Can you imagine what that would look like? <coughs> the top of Mount Sinai with fire, there's a cloud, there's thunder, and there's lightning. Do you think that made an impression on the people? Yes. This is God. This is God. This is the one that we worship. And then the smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace. The whole mountain trembled violently, and the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Then Moses spoke, and the voice of God answered him. Whew. That's, a, that's, a, that's something to behold right there, isn't it? That's like 3D all around you, being in the presence of God. The whole mountain began trembling before he spoke. And Moses spoke, Lord, is it you? And the Lord spoke back and said, yes. Now look what the Lord said. Exodus 20, beginning in verse 1. And God spoke all these words. Why would it be important that God would start out like this and that we understood the words were from God? First of all, we don't want the words to come from Moses because he's a man. So in Exodus chapter 20, verse 1, it says, God spoke these. And we learned last week that God is a God of truth. He said, here are the commandments. In verse 2, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He wanted them to know for sure who he was, right? And when I was doing this, this sermon this week, I was thinking about it. As he was telling this generation of people that were there, the millions of people, that I am the God who three months ago brought you out of bondage, not brought you out of slavery. It is the same God that breaks the bondage and slavery we had to sin, didn't he? They were in handcuffs. They were shackled three months earlier. They had no freedom in their life. And God said, just remember this. I am the God that brought you out of that. And now you are free. So why would God want to remind them of who he was after only three months? They forget. They're exactly right, Matt. They forget. And we know that people forget. It wasn't long after this. They forgot the Ten Commandments, God. They forgot everything and went hog wild. They made an idol for themselves, didn't they? Worship the golden calf. Just a, just a short time after this. So, if those people can forget God after three months, after the mountains tremble, and there's a violent earthquake and stuff, what about us? What about us people today? How soon do we forget the goodness of God and His mercy and His grace? Or you'll say, Pastor Bill, that doesn't happen. Well, yes, it does, too. So God is reminding them, I am the God that brought you out of slavery. And he's reminding us today, I am the God who brought you out of the bondage of sin. And out of the land of slavery. Can't sin become a slavery? Can you become a slave to sin? Absolutely. Now, here's where he starts in verse 3. You shall have no other gods before me. Now, the first thing he says, I want your true loyalty. I want no one else. You are not to worship any other gods. Now, the reason he said this is because they had come out of Egypt. And there were over 50 gods that the Egyptians worshipped. They worshipped every animal that there was. And that's why when God sent the plague, remember the plagues that he sent? Of lice and fleas and flies and, and frogs. That's because those were the gods that the Egyptians worshipped. 